Well, we're in the final month here of 2023, and I see the questions forming all over the internet, and that is, who do you guys think is going to win the four major tournaments next year in tennis? So why not make a video on it since it's a big conversation right now? And I guess we'll get started today with the women's side of things. We'll do the men's previews and predictions uh, starting next week. So let's get started with the Australian Open. And this one, you can kind of have a little bit more of a breakdown since it's kind of in that near future since that tournament's in January. And I'm going to go with Iga Fiontek. Reason being, she ended the year so strongly in 2023, world number one player. She's upset with the way how her hard court season went uh, last year in 2023, I know the, but she did end in a very strong way, winning that Beijing tournament and the WTA finals. So I just think kind of that little mental edge there, I think she's really motivated to get it. I actually kind of like the idea that she's playing in the tournament in very late December. This way she kind of has that little breather off season, work on a few things, get that little bit of action in before she ran things up there in January. Now, after that, this is where things get tough because French Open's not until June. A lot could happen from now until June, right? That's about, what, six, seven months away. So kind of harder to predict it. I'm going to take the safe route in that one and go Iga Fiontek as well uh, just because she's won three of the last four French Open, right? She's kind of becoming the queen of clay, if you will. At this point, somebody's really had to step up and, and try to dethrone her from that because she's looked so dominant on clay the last few seasons. And if it's going to be a clay tournament, you got to put her as the front runner until somebody can step up and say otherwise. So going to go with Iga to win that one as well. Now to the Wimbledon tournament. Not Iga this time. I'm going to go with the world number two, Irena Sabalenka. I really like the grass surface for her because it's a quicker uh, pace. Uh, obviously, her power game, I think, kind of goes well with the grass court season. And last year, that was a, a very bad loss for losing to Ans Jabbar in the semifinals there. And Ans, obviously, is great on the grass court as well. She's lo lost in the finals the last two years. But still, I really think Irena Sabalenka has the best chance of winning this tournament. She, and first off, let's be honest, guys, right? She should have way more than just one major championship under her belt. I think this is her best chance of getting another Grand Slam title. And I expect her to do so in this tournament, at least here in uh, the early goings. Again, that's a far way uh, away because that tournament will be there in July. Now, not a major, but a big bonus. The Olympics are this year, so let's throw that one in the mix, too. That's a fun tournament. They're going to be in Paris at Roland Garros. The tournament will be held at. So, again, we just talked about Iga back, uh, you know, winning the French Open, being the queen of clay, the whole nine yards. It's going to be held at Roland Garros. You got to go Iga Sviantec there. It's hard to, again, until somebody could step up and prove us different here with the clay court, you got to go with Iga Shiantek. So I'm going to predict that she wins that tournament. And now finally to the U.S. Open. This one so, so, so far away. Uh, whoever wins this tournament too, God bless, because you're going through a very, very tough season with the Olympics. You know, add into that mix there too. It's a very long season just in general getting to that point. Now another major sort of tournament thrown into the mix there. You know, a lot on uh, all of these players. But I'm going to go with the feel-good story here. I want, I'm going to go with Jess Pagula. She had a great year last year in 2023. She's really coming into her own. Um, it's in New York, right, uh, where she's obviously from. We know what their father, being the owner of the Buffalo Bills and the Buffalo Sabres. So a bit of a feel-good story. But, I mean, not only just that being a feel-good story, she plays very well on the hard courts. We know that. Uh, she has a very sneaky power game. She even kind of said it there in the WTA finals. I don't know why I don't get, you know, respected in the power game. Uh, she definitely has it. I think that's going to be a, a very good opportunity for her to win uh, that type of tournament like that. She's Last year, too, she played great in that whole entire lead up to the U.S. Open. I know she's been kind of looking to make a big stamp on the major tournaments, too. That's kind of been her own little, little downfall here in the career that she hasn't really made that real deep run. So I'm going with that feel-good story there. But again... A lot could happen. Don't forget we have Naomi Osaka coming back this year. She's a hardcore specialist. Last year, Coco Goff, of the 50 uh, matches she won on the WTA Tour, 38 of them were on hardcore. She could definitely win one of them there. Um, so that's, I would say, kind of the biggest question mark would definitely be the U.S. Open. But 
There you go, guys. That's how I have it. Australian Open, Igis Fiontech. French Open, Igis Fiontech. Wimbledon, Irena Sabalenka. Olympics, Igis Fiontech. End the year with Jess Pagula getting her first major championship. Let me know what you guys think.